To me, machines that are learning about the world through the processes that the brain uses. It's actually, it's not about capabilities. It's not about being able to pass the Turing test or about doing this or doing that. It's about implementing the same processes that we use in our neocortex. And I can apply it to lots of different things. It may not be human-like at all, but it's those learning processes which are key. And that is the definition of machine intelligence, not passing some particular test or doing some particular task. Hierarchical temporal memory, or HTM, is a name that describes a broad theory about how the neocortex works. It says that the cortex is a hierarchy of identical memory regions. It's primarily a memory system, and it's primarily learning about time sequences. We don't actually trying to model the brain or understand the brain. We're trying to understand the neocortex, which is about 75% of the volume of a human brain. The cortex is the part we're trying to understand, and HTM is a framework for understanding the cortex. You can understand probably 90% of what we think of as human intelligence just by modeling the neocortex. We've spent years optimizing our software, and, we, and today we can model in a very fast fashion something about a millionth the size of the human neocortex. To get beyond that, we're going to need custom hardware. It's very much like the beginning of the computing era. We're going to go through that same sort of evolutionary process, figuring out what are the right physical substrates and architectures for building big, fast, cortical models. But the memory wheel today is fairly straightforward and simple. It's just a, a simple, flat model, and we give an address, we get something back. This memory is more active. It's the elements are interacting with each other. It is not processor-centric. It's a completely distributed system. If you think about your brain, there's no central processor in charge, right? And, and you can damage any part of the brain, any part of the cortex, and you pretty much can be pretty normal, as long as it's some critical area. We can't ask humans to look at billions of data streams nonstop, 24 hours a day. And so we can build intelligent machines that look at data nonstop, never get tired, and in some sense, free us up from that drudgery. What's the ultimate answer to the, you know, the origins of human life? And so these are the most exciting things we think about. And they're hard for us to think about. Uh, it's hard for us to concentrate on. We're humans, we have to eat, we have to do other things all the time. I don't see why in the future we can't make machines that help us think about really deep problems in mathematics and physics and, and cosmology. We can augment our knowledge of the universe and accelerate our accretion of knowledge. And to me, that is the most exciting thing. And so I think if, if we as society all learn how our brains work and how we form beliefs about the world, and we all understand we're capable of forming false beliefs if we've been exposed to patterns which are not really true, then it can lead to a better understanding of why we believe different things, why we have different belief structures.